Okay. So. Oh, I'm reading it? Yes. I apologize for the handwriting at some point. I was no. like, eh. <laughs> so, okay. We good? Starting now. Ruben Hernandez Sr., growing up in 1950s Panama, had a dream of growing up to becoming a jockey. He fulfilled his dream by racing horses in Panama and all throughout the United States, including winning the 1979 Belmont. He became pretty famous back in the day, and is considered to be one of the best to ride of his time. But he also happens to be my grandfather. The world of horse racing was always a prominent aspect in my life growing up, and that's thanks to my grandparents. From Triple Crown race parties organized by my Nana to going to the racetrack to see the horses with my Papa. And I knew Papa was a jockey at some point in his life. I knew that's what he did for a living, but that's all I really thought of it as, just his job. I didn't know just how important and well-known he was in the industry. Until I was 16 and I'm just sitting at home, chilling with my family, getting ready to watch the Belmont Stakes, when my Nana starts yelling at us to look at the TV, because it's Papa's Belmont race from 1979 that he won. What was life like in Panama as a child? My childhood was great. Before I went to school in the country, I was surrounded by horses and cows. My grandfather used to have a lot of cows and, mm -hmm. and horses. And that's the horse that I was riding when I was there. He gave me a horse. When did horse racing come into play? Like, did you know about it when you were a kid? When I was in Panama, and when I was living in the country, I was, even though I was a little kid, I knew, I remember my dad, we have an uncle that was a jockey, Sandino Hernandez. So it ran as a family? It ran as a family. So I knew he, had a, uh, he was a jockey. I always wanted to be a jockey. I always heard about him, and I wanted to be a jockey all the time. When I first saw him riding a horse, I knew that he was the right thing, mm -hmm. that he was one of the best. He was an excellent rider. There was no one stronger than him. A mark that you could give him, you could give him an A+. Plus. The only problem that he has is that he was too quiet. He never got mad when they bad on him. You know, usually when you get bad on in a race, you come complaining. He never complained. You got to be aggressive when it comes to talk to trainers, to owners, to people. You know, you gotta be a hustler. He talks with his writing. Because I keep hearing a lot about this Panama Jockey School. At what age, like, is it a legit school? What it is, is it? It's, uh, it's run by the racetrack to, in order to teach kids how to ride horses. We take our horses and take it to the track and train them, ride them. The whole process from you coming here from Panama as like a jockey, like that whole process, take me through that process. Like I said, I was doing very well, and then um, one day uh, a guy okay. says to me, he said, listen, this guy is looking, did they want to talk to you? And I said, who are they? And he goes, uh, there's, he says, three gringos. And there was there, Sonier, Jimmy Bracken, and Ralph Cesar. Rest in peace. He started talking to me, oh, I see the way you ride, you ride good, blah, blah, blah. We, I, I, I want you to come to, to the United States to ride for me. And I said, oh, oh yeah, I'd like to do that. How long did you race in Panama before you came here? 70, 71, 72, four, like four years, four, oh, four years, something years. years, four and a half. And where did he race down here? Like, what were the tracks? The track was Hialeah mm -hmm. in Calder, in, in Gulfstream Park.
this guy is a watermelon farm. Okay. Is that a watermelon farm? Oh my god. We met in the 70s. You met in the 70s. Right. Right. But you met him here in Florida before you went to New York. In Florida, right. So you, did you compete against him a lot? Yeah, we rode together many, many years. Compete, we rode here in Florida, mm -hmm. in New Jersey, oh. in New York, many years in New York. People knew him in New York. Because Saratoga, we would go to the racetrack a lot. Going to the racetrack, everybody knew who I was because of him. They come up with the... the the, the programs for them to sign, and then you're like trying to walk with your dad, and then everybody's like, oh, can you, can you sign this for me? You can see, when you see a good rider, mm -hmm. you know right away. You know right away. He, he can ride anywhere. He, he was one of them. Who do you think was his biggest competitor? Angel Caldero. One of the best of the best was Angel Caldero. I appreciate that I, he said that I was the best, but I don't think so. He's tough, tough rider. Caldero would ride not his horse in the race. He would ride his, mine, and, and somebody else. Him, yeah, I learned a lot from him because he was a, he was the greatest. And I always, I hold a lot to him because he, I learned from him. I don't know, probably because he liked me as a friend. Uh, I competed with a lot of good riders, including him. I'm always said that you're as good as your horse. The horse is like 90% of the outcome. So when you have a good horse, it's going to make you look good. But good riders can win on a horse that doesn't have to be a favor. And um, your father was one of them, you know. I mean, he could win on any kind of horse. Well, I rode with him a lot, and he beat me a lot. But my biggest memory on him was when he won the Belmont. Number nine, Coastal, owned by William Hagen Perry, trained by David Whiteley, ridden by Ruben Hernandez. Well, I was real happy for him. Were you watching it live? It's my compadre. <laughs> so, like, when you won the 1979 Belmont, like, can you, like, what, what happened that day? Like, take me through, like, what happened. Well, the whole experience of that day was, that, it, was it was exciting. And I was riding a horse that was running very good. He was a good horse. I knew we had a shot to run a good race. <laughs> I'm not saying that when I win it. You're going to win this race. I'm going to go so far, I'm going to be the full floor. So please take your time. If not, I'm not going to make it to the women's circle. But when, when we went to the race, it was just great because uh, I did what I was supposed to do. I rode my horse, it broke good. Coastal going into the back of the gate now. Coastal, ridden by Ruben Hernandez, the final horse to be loaded. Mystic era, Jorge Velasquez aboard. They're all in line. And they're off. Angel was there riding. Number two, General Assembly, Bertman Firestone, the owner, Leroy Jolly, the trainer, Angel Cordero Jr., the rider. Big memory for me because I know it was for him to accomplish something of that magnitude. And I was placing him perfectly. Angel was running second or third or something like that. And around the turn, I, was, I went inside. Angel was next to me. It's funny because he said, go get it, Ruth. And I got through there, and, I, and I eventually I won the race. Coastal on the inside is moving up toward leader now and down the stretch. Spectacular bit on the outside. It is Coastal on the inside. Those two now vying for the lead at Coastal puts ahead in front. Spectacular bed back into second. Golden Act is third, approaching the 16th pole. It is an upset now. Coastal has the lead by three. Spectacular bit on the inside. Coastal on the outside. It is Coastal in front. And under the wire, an upset in this, the Belmont Stakes. Coastal, the supplemented horse. Coastal, owned by William Hagen Perry, trained by David Whiteley, ridden by Ruben Hernandez. The upset winner of the Belmont Stakes. A very tight photo between Spectacular Bid and Golden Axe for place and show position. Uh -huh. And even the announcer said he's taking his sweet time. That's what the guy said. <laughs> <laughs> because he knew that you know, she told me it's going to be so fun. So I made it to the winner's circle. I was rooting for him. Really, I was rooting for him. Can imagine how proud of him he must have been. Oh yeah, <laughs> jumping and screaming. Another one for the Latin Jacks. Yes. He beat a horse that was going for the triple crown and he was a better horse. And he rode a beautiful race and he beat him. It's official, you're in the history books, Ruben. Thank you.